Air Asia has been a game changer in the airline industry, offering affordable and convenient air travel to millions of people across Southeast Asia and beyond. And the man behind the airline success, CEO Tony Fernandez, continues to feed the market with his unconventional ideas. But the pandemic has been tough on the airlines, as it has been for other businesses. However, with the rise of vaccination rates and ease of travel restrictions in many countries, Air Asia is cheering up for a comeback. Yeah, I mean, boy, this has been a challenging period, right? We just finished COVID, then war in Europe, uh, geopolitical tension everywhere. But yeah, funny, I've been a, you know, this sounds like Miss World, but I'm a believer that people are much more together now. Um, and, you know, I'm not worried about the geopolitical situation. I think it will eventually solve itself. You know, Ukraine and Russia and uh, the issues in North Asia seem to be sorting itself out. Air Asia has also been expanding its services beyond air travel. Recently, the airline launched a food delivery service called Air Asia Food, which has been well received by customers. In addition, Air Asia is also looking to ventures into the digital realm with the launch of its own e-wallet, Big Pay. Following this development, Air Asia is poised to be a major player not only in airline industry but other sectors as well. We're going to focus on duty free. We're going to focus on ride hailing. We're going to focus on land options for travel. Um, and uh, we'll build a community. It's very important. I, I don't want to talk about it too much now, but we want to build a community of travelers uh, that can get information, that can build NFTs, uh, can communicate via messenger. So I want to make this like a country. Um, so you'll see in time how it will be different. But we will be different from Traveloka and Expedia and all these other brands. So we think travel is not just in the air, but on the ground as well. So we believe that we can, um, you know, make a difference in terms of uh, providing a total travel solution, right? Not just move you from A to B on, in the air, but also B to C in the ground. And so we want to be a total, total provider of, of travel options. Air Asia has announced that it will start flying between Kuala Lumpur and Bandung's new airport Kartajati. This new route is expected to boost connectivity and tourism between the two cities. And the great thing about Kartajati is that it not just serves Bandung, it serves a lot of West Java. Yeah. And there's a lot of beautiful places in West Java. And I think relationship with governments and local government is you know, we can't just take, take, take. We want to help the Indonesian government develop that airport. They spend a lot of money building it. So my promise to, you know, Pak Budi is we will do our best. And look, we did it with Bandung. No one flew to Bandung. No one. Not Garuda, not that time Sapati, Mapati, no one flew. Only AirAsia, right? Because of AirAsia, they built a new airport. And many airlines came, right? So we'll do it again. But this time, I'm excited to develop West Java as well. It's an amazing part of the world. The low-cost carrier is one of the airlines that serve underserved regions in Indonesia, such as Lombok and Lake Toba, where world-class races like Superbike World Championship and F1 Hydrant are taking place. So, you know, one great thing about Indonesia, every time I go, I discover new things, right? So, you know, I haven't been to Lombok. I'm going to go to Lombok in March uh, to see the MotoGP. And, you know, when I met governor of Lombok, um, you know, there was so much more to Lombok that I didn't know. So Indonesia is, is a continent with, with so much beauty and so many great people that we're excited. Yeah, yeah, Salangit is, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, Toba, I'd never been, and when I yeah. saw Lake Toba, I, I thought I was in Switzerland. So, you know, we, we yeah, we, we want to start opening up Indonesia to the world. You know, and we were starting that process, you know, Belintung and Lombok and all of those things that I promised Bapak President, 
was happening and then COVID came, right? Uh, so now it's restarting again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a big believer in ASEAN. Um, and, uh, you know, I think ASEAN, by being more united, means we are less dependent on China or India or what happens in Russia. We create our own economy. Air Asia has survived by making more Indonesians fly to Malaysia, more Malaysians flying to Bandung, right? And, and rest of Indonesia. So we created an own internal market. So I want to continue building that internal market, right? Just like most companies that aim to survive in the ever-changing world, the Air Asia continues to innovate. Yeah, so we created a company called Teleport. Yeah. So again, I want to disrupt logistics. Again, my, my goal is to do secondary cities more than big cities. So right now, if you're in Padang, maybe it goes to Jakarta, then another plane takes it to Padang. I want to take it directly to Padang, just like I did with passengers, right? So my goal is to build point-to-point -point logistics, cheaper, faster, easier to use. Cargo, e-commerce, and uh, Korea. With their four pillars, AirAsia continues to disrupt the status quo to connect Southeast Asia and beyond. Noni Putri and Dian Merdeka Wati reporting for C Today from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay.